welcome back to Easy Orthodontics and today we're going to talk about open bites. Open bites usually present a challenge as braces tend to pull teeth rather than to push them. So dental camouflage of open bites can be accomplished by extrusive mechanics in the anterior regions and the simplest way to do that is to use a one couple extrusion arch. Extrusion arch generates moments and forces very similar to that an intrusion arch does. And the difference is simply by inverting the intrusion arch and place, placing it upside down into the molar tube. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna engage the we're gonna engage the arch into the molar tube and then simply put it as it is inactivated. So when we activate an extrusion arch, it's gonna be tied up at the area of the incisor region. This is how it's activated. The system of moments and forces on the molar looks like that. So we're going to have a molar couple which tends to tip the crown of the molar mesially while the roots are tipped distally. At the same time, when we tie up the, uh, the wire at the incisor region, which is a little bit facially to the center of resistance, we're going to have the incisor's crowns tipping, tipping lingually. So what's going to counteract this moment of couple is going to be a pair of vertical forces which act by extrusion on the incisors and by intrusive on by intrusive force on the molars. To prepare for the extrusive mechanics, we have to place a segmental arch in the anterior region so that we a little bit diminish those movements of the anterior teeth against each other. So let's go back to the location of the center of resistance and the placement of, of the activation of the arch. So if we place, if we tie up the extrusion arch anteriorly to the center of resistance at a specific distance, at the most anteriorly positioned tooth, so what it's going to do, it's going to tend to add this moment of force which tends to tip the incisor tooth lingually. If we tie up this extrusion arch exactly underneath the center of resistance at a very close distance to it, so it's gonna it's gonna produce a very pure extrusion. Let's focus a little bit on what happens to the radius of the dental arch. So if we remember, if we go back to the intrusion arch and if we imagine that the incisor tooth is going to flare with the intrusive mechanics and the positioning of activation a little bit forward to the center of resistance, so what's gonna happen to the entire uh, dental arch, it's gonna go larger and longer. So the flaring of the incisors will tend to increase the length of the dental arch. The opposite happens when an extrusive arch is activated. So when we activate the extrusion arch, the lingual tipping of the incisors happen, happens, which actually tends to shorten the length of the dental arch. This is something that should be kept in mind. Similarly to what we did when we tried to control the length of the dental arch with the intrusion mechanics and we, uh, we were cinching the uh, end behind the molar tube, what we can do here in the extrusive mechanics, we can just put a stop mesially to the molar. This stop, first, it will tend to decrease the shortening of the dental arch. This is the first effect. And the second effect, this will decrease the tendency of the molar to flare with the a moment of couple which is activated uh, with the extrusion arch mechanics. So the third effect of placing a mesial stop to the molar is the decrease of the tendency of the incisor tooth to tip, uh, to tip lingually. So overall we have three main effects of placement of the stop mesial to the molar. So first is that we control the arch, uh, the length of the dental arch, so we tend to control that decrease of the length, which happens with the extrusion mechanics. The second effect is that we control that mesial molar crown tip, which is un undesired in most of the cases. And the third, the very important effect is uh, we control the tendency of the incisors to tip lingually. So we have discussed what happens in the sagittal plane as well as in the vertical plane. The uh, transverse plane should uh, should also has been has to be controlled. So if we're talking about the the um, tube on the molar which uh, receives the moment of couple, it also receives that intrusive force which acts 
a little bit buckly to the center of resistance. So what happens that the direction of force uh, is going to go just around the center of resistance. So the tendency it creates the moment which you know, which uh, in turn creates the tendency of the molar crown to tip buckly. So this is this could be a desired effect, but if this is a, something that is unwanted, we will need to control that. In order to control that unwanted buckle crown tipping, we can place a simple transpalatal arch. One couple mechanics produce predictable, determinate, and controllable forces. It's very easy to incorporate into the practice, and it's very easy to see the immediate results of how they work. So let's go and use them clinically.